My name is Matthew Scholz. Make sure to watch Motor America on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. And Dunlop R8 rear. Bikes are in gear, revs are up. There goes the lights. They're out and we're rolling. Man, Matthew Scholz got a great jump from the second row, Greg, on the 11 there. Here goes Cam Bobier, ripping through the gears, heading into turn number one, but it's got to be Josh Heron on the outside. And yesterday, Heron had such a jackrabbit start, but he also had a different compound front tire, a little softer, and he had a ton of confidence in it. But it's the number two on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Machine that leads the way. What about Cam Peterson running third, Skultz fourth, PJ Jacobson doesn't quite get off the line the way he wanted. He's going to be relying on that BMW horsepower as they head down towards turn five. PJ's going to take two spots go from fifth to possibly third. Bobier took the lead for a moment, but Heron's so deep on the brakes, but Bobier's got position, so we'll hold on to it, and Heron has to just let off for a, just a moment. Matthew Schultz, big mistake down in turn five, couldn't get the bike slowed, Whoa. he's going to lose about three or four spots. Bobier wide, Heron takes advantage of that, so now the number two takes over the spot. Yeah. Love what I see from Cam Peterson. He's going to try to attack Bobier as they go down. As you see, Gagne, he attacks both of them. But Whoa. number one goes from fourth to second. On their back foot all weekend long and using the morning session to try to take advantage of the most setup they can. Jake Gagne riding pure talent with a great setup, able to slot himself into second place. And look how good that R1 went through the carousel there. He was able to draw up a little bit on Aaron and pull away from the BMW of Bobier through the middle of the carousel. Now they're going to shoot out of the chicane and head down to Canada Corner. Gagne on a run, went 10.1 this morning, fast as he had been all weekend. Yamaha's have been down on top speed. Some of that might be due to setup, but we're getting ready to see exactly how the legs can stretch on the fresh and lean progressive Yamaha as we get closer and closer to that front straightaway. Josh Heron having it his way though on this first lap. He had to fight for it, but look how close Gagne is able to, to close up on him. Final corner, up the hill we go, turn 14. This Heron's going to pull the trigger. Let's see it. And this is where you'll see the power of Cam Bobier. He will try to draw up on the back of Gagne and draft him before they get to that finish line. Look at the BMW in third on your screen. He is ever doing everything he can. He will go by Gagne, but I don't really get there before the breaking zone. He does. So Cam Bobier slots himself into second. Gagne now will have to try to run with these guys down the back straightaway and be in the draft. Times show that he went a half a second faster in warm-up than he did all day yesterday. But he's also still getting to know the bike I think we've seen him have so much success that we've forgotten that they're still learning you know he's still working with a new crew and a new team in order to improve this motorcycle and get that first win and Cameron Bobier goes Man. into the lead down in turn number five that was just so classy it right was there. a straight line wasn't it great yeah I mean, he just straight line pass he had the bike slowed down behind Heron and then just thought I'm gonna let off the brakes a little bit get down to the apex slow the bike down Greg that was really impressive. And Aaron's going to do it back to him right now. So he boxed Cameron Bobier, and this is what we expect from Josh Aaron. He never, ever gives up, and he pushes constantly. Both these riders getting after it. And if Cameron Bobier learned anything in his two years at the World Championship in Moto2, Penagale V4R. And as they come across the stripe, it's a 10 flat for Heron and a 9, a 10, sorry, 10 7 for Heron and a 10 6 with PJ Jacobson going 10 1. And it looks like the 78 ben is Smith. down. Ben Smith, is it? Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Smith. I was going to mention Benjamin Smith because he was well placed right there in the top 10 position. So unfortunately, Benjamin Smith on the CW Moto Yamaha R1 had an incident. And Jay, that's one of the riders we look at as the oh, future. Got oh, a red flag. Or no, Bobier's got Bobier's a problem. Got a problem. Sorry about that. Yeah, Bobier's sorry. got a problem. So for Cameron Bobier, he pulls oh. off the racetrack. And now Jay Gagne, all eyes are on him and his finishing position because this could really change the championship again. So Bobier on the Titler cycle BMW is off the racing circuit, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to continue. Former world champ, Moto2 champ, Tony Elias, a little boost in confidence, and that's exactly what he's been looking for. Tony Elias back in action this season after a short retirement. Of course, Tony Elias here in Moto America, the jump that he has made this weekend, Jason. He definitely was struggling with the setup of the motorcycle and definitely confidence. I mean, we were seeing him earlier just turning early into corners and oh, oh Matthew, Matthew Skultz. Yep.
What did he, did he really it, just lose the front? I think he lost the front there. Probably lost the front going in. The brakes were so much better this morning when he went out for warm-up. That's really what helped him get down to the eight that he got down to. Now, same thing for Heron with that front tire. We saw him yesterday. He complained a little bit about didn't have the feel that he needed. Wasn't throwing anybody under the bus. He's just gone to another compound, Greg, that's going to make it easier for him. So both those guys had significant changes overnight that were simple. They had to fix brakes on one, and they had to go to another compound on another. But you can see what they're doing out front. These two guys are staying super consistent behind. The difference in lap times, though, Greg, 296 and 297 for the leaders. These guys are both in the tens. That is the difference. And the question is, what's Cameron Peterson going to do if he gets a shot at his teammate? Right now, there's only one rider in the top six that hasn't won a Medallia Superbike race yet in their career. And that's the 99 of Jacobson as Skultz goes up the inside of Tony Elias. That's a nice pass. He'll take that position for the moment. And now it's Yamaha versus Suzuki on the straightaway. With one lap to go, as Heron comes up the hill, he's going to take the white flag, and we'll get an idea of what his lead is. So he comes across the line, and it's going to be 209.175 for Josh Heron. With one lap to go, PJ goes 209.2, though, Jason. Unreal. They are flirting in the 208 range this late in the day with a low fuel load and Dunlop tires that have... 11 laps on him. And Heron did a 209-1 to qualify on pole, and he's just done it coming to the white flag right now. So that tells you that change overnight for this team was all this guy needed to get himself comfortable on the front end of that bike, release that lever. He talked yesterday about, I just couldn't let go of the lever and carry any roll speed. I didn't have the stability underneath me. And they got together with the Dunlop Techs last night. They discussed what they needed to do, and, uh, and that's what's made this guy comfortable. And you can see the battle for third still raging on between the two teammates i think that'll finish that way i don't think pj i don't think uh camp peterson be. will go past gone yeah i think it'll stay right where he's at but uh looking at this again 30 flat pj jacobson does in the first split to go fastest but look at what heron's doing again Greg. unbelievable 30.5 <laughs> the fastest sector two split of the race it comes up on our timing screens in red pj jacobson loses four tenths of a second there were doubters in the offseason about the decision from the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati team. Is Josh Heron committed to Medallia Superbike and the program? Did he deserve the Superbike ride? Of course he did. He won this team a national championship last year in Supersport. But Josh Heron is proving all the doubters wrong. He deserved the ride, and he is so close to getting his first win of the season. And Jason, this would be his ninth win. Oh, look at the motorcycle moving around. He's pushing so hard. He wants to win this thing with the biggest gap possible. So here we go. It's Josh Heron, the number two on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati, the Pentagon V4R. He's behind the bubble. Up the hill he comes. The checkered flag awaits for Josh Heron, and he will take victory in race number two, a Medallia Superbike here in Moto America. And here come the pair of fresh and lean progressive Yamahas. Cameron Peterson with a bit of a move, but it's going to come across like that.